You know, in life, I swear, the thing about networking and, and having conversations, you bring some impactful people that are putting their flag into content creation, monologue. Maya, what's up? Hey, um, yeah. So in regards to the content creation, I think it's such a powerful, like, you know, for me on my channel, I talk a lot about, I guess what you could say, like both ends of the spectrum of how content creation can go. It can go by playing into a fantasy character, portraying this lifestyle. Um, that's necessarily, you know, at some point you can tell that when someone's authentic and who's not authentic and, you know, I don't have, um, Instagram, I don't have TikTok. for me. I cut that out because I couldn't show up as myself. I feel like, you know, that's a personal thing within how I live my life. I have my YouTube channel. I guess you could say I I'm a content creator. Um, but I'm just showcasing exactly who I am every day. And that's like just coming from a message that I have to sh have to share. And um, yeah, I guess like, you know, my intention with starting my my YouTube channel was I wanted to be myself. I wanted to speak my voice. I didn't want to have to be a, a slave to my phone and like showcasing my life, like, you know, going to like it was just getting out of hand within my in the way I was participating on Instagram. So now that I have my YouTube channel, I just love talking who like my talk and you know, I walk my walk, but I walk my walk in private. I, I have like, I, I like being a private person, but I also have a very important message to share. Man, we're not even two minutes in and I'm telling you, we talked before we hit the record button, the energy that's about to be in this topic. I know my audience is going to be like, yo, men and women buckle up. Skip the seatbelt on. We're about yeah, to take you on a roller coaster ride. We're going to the top of the top. And the drop is going to be, it's going to be immaculate. But we're here to talk about a lot of what you talk about. Self-development in men, in particular women. But from the side of this dating and protecting our energy and semen retention, hmm. let's get into it. The first question. This world is very over-sexualized. How do we find the connection piece that I feel like a lot of men and women are missing right now? Hmm. Well, the first and foremost, you know, the connection every human being must make, especially in today's society that's feeding off of our vital life force energy, which is correlated to our sexual energy, our creative energy, our healing energy. It all happens within the same energy within the body and that stems from our sexuality and sexuality is powerful and within today's generation it's being manipulated in so many different facets and you can see it on you know instagram on music videos on honestly advertisement and it's not setting first and foremost us up to look within because how can you do that when you're constantly being programmed to look outside of yourself for validation by using your body or by maybe, you know, not being who yourself or not being yourself because in today's generation also, people don't know who they are. And that's not a wrong thing. It's a powerful thing to not know who you are. It's a powerful thing to look at all your life circumstances, everything that's brought you to where you are now and using it to catapult you into a new way of living and i preach sacredness within human beings because we are sacred beings and we've been disconnected from that um you know honestly we're seeing the side effects of our generation living and being brought up in this social media age and we can't discount the implications that have been happening within mental health um relationships divorce rates people not being able to take accountability for anything in their lives because they're so used to looking outside of themselves. So that's kind of, I guess, that answer to your question. It's powerful with what you're saying, because, you know, when you protect your energy, you see there's a lot of other energy that orbits around. And I can speak on this firsthand. You know, you work from home is one thing. You're doing the content creation, doing the podcast is the other thing. So when you shut off parts of the world and you know that you're a no-nonsense guy or gal and you have your talking points, you have your 
energy that you're wanting to keep, there's a lot of toxic energy that's around there or out there, should I say. And what then tends to happen is they don't know how to react with real life energy, right? Mm -hmm. For you as a woman that's in this world right now, what are some of the things that you see that you do to protect your energy? Sexual side. Let's really talk about that. Let's deep dive into that. Yeah. And I think that that's the most important place to start is within our sexual energy. That's that's like truly what keeps us alive is our vital life force energy. And when we can be first and foremost aware of the internal world that we have, then we can br- begin to perceive our external world differently. And it's not about, you know, how can I word this properly? Um, you know, I think within like the self-help community and like the self-development, a lot of people are like, oh, like it's a journey to like get back to who you are. You got to go through a lot of your trauma work and all this stuff to connect back to yourself. And what we fail to realize is that hand to, I like to say like my higher self that knows my plan, knows why I'm here, knows exactly the specific roots that have brought me to where I am today. And it's also guiding me to where I need to be. And that's why having that internal awareness is key. Internal aware, having awareness is so important in today's generation. And I think self-awareness is correlated to self-accountability and self-accountability is what I live by, is owning every single thing in your life. Even if you don't like it, even if someone did something to you, taking accountability, even for other people's actions in your life, allows you access to the greater mind that is within, that knows why these specific people had to come into your life, had to break you open, just so you can question your internal world, to make that connection to your higher self, God, whatever you want to call it. It's all, we all come from that same source and that same source is a loving energy. And we have to be aware and shine our light on what is not loving in our lives. And perhaps the things are not loving is directly linked into where you still need to show up for yourself in a grander capacity to really realize who you are, to know thyself and to know thyself is so, so crucial. Mm, 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 mm. I told people you're gonna fucking cook, man. Two people, it's just, it's just cooking right now. We yeah, the, 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 the 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 pots are out, and we haven't even <laughs> added nothing into the. We're just we're ready to cook. You it's know what heating I mean? up, yeah, for sure. You're you have so much power of how you speak because it's that factors of taking that self accountability, and a lot of people don't want to take self accountability. They don't want to do the inner work. I have a life coaching background. I'm no longer practicing because life is just busy as it is. And we have other things that we have to put into place. So when I get into conversations, say you're out on dates. I know a lot of women look at me and they're intimidated as fuck. Intimidated as fuck. Because how you can hold, maintain, frame, you're having a conversation. So some of them have this tendency to be like, oh, you're going to podcast me to death. Because it's like they're trying to throw subtle shots at you. And it's like, all right, whatever. No, it's because I know how to be a master communicator. I know what it is I want. I know where it is I'm going. But it's for you to understand is that I can meet you where you're at. I have range all over the place. Yeah. I turn on the coaching button. I can basically just break you down. Yeah. All for the right reasons. Because yeah. I am very aware of what's going on. So a lot of things that I know are pre-formulated or pre-scripted and other conversations that you've seen them have, you tend to really just deep dive. You know what I mean? You can be like, okay, I understand you, you, you formulated that. That's a script. You have the mm-hmm. same recycled script. You got to stop totally. using that because people that are aware and have emotional intelligence can pick up on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, totally. And I, I'm like, even like us interacting on your podcast right now, I can see it within you. Like you have a self-containment around you. You're, you're secure in the knowledge that you're bringing forth. And that is why like this, this script thing don't work because you're also discounting the very gift that maybe perhaps this here and now moment is waiting for you to access by being in the here and now without needing like a script to rely on people to rely on shit, even like equipment to rely on. Like, can you just show up in truth? And that's the thing that's missing as well is truth. And that's why 
Truth right now in today's society is one of the most triggering things for people because people are living lies every day. Hmm. So let's get into it. You talk a lot about semen retention. I do. Yes. Men, men, men. It's got, I've always said, have dick, you got to have dick discipline and you can't find, you're not supposed to be able to find your manhood through your dick. That's just how it is. Find your manhood through some other places, some other channels. Yeah. Talk about the powers behind semen retention. Speak on men first. And then we're going to go into the women part also too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What so is semen like, retention? Semen retention, like, you know, first and foremost, I just want to point out, because I'm sure people are like, oh, this chick is talking about semen retention. She don't even got a dick. What the hell does she know? And listen, that is something that I... When I first started making my my semen retention content, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, you know, in August, I made a commitment to show up every single day speaking my truth. So every single day, and you can see it, I've documented every single day of my kind of self-development journey myself on YouTube. And within every day comes with a new message. And one of these messages was semen retention. Now, I had no prior information about semen retention. I had no idea I got because once I've retained my own sexual energy, I've developed a channel into, you know, my higher self that I just follow my guidance. I trust myself enough to do that. A lot of people battle with themselves because they don't have trust because mm. they haven't shown up in their highest good yet. So why should they trust themselves? So for me, I have fostered trust. So that's why even when I say things, I'm confident behind my words because I know it's coming from the truest truth within my being. So um, first and foremost, semen retention is powerful. I want to first preface this because this is a very important part to my story. I talk about this through accountability because I was participating in the, I like to say the hidden sex slave industry, which is all across Instagram, TikTok, even YouTube. You can't really get away from it where women are over-sexualizing themselves in a sneaky way for male validation. And men are truly being weakened by that. Uh, mm. A true masculine man's weakness is a, is a woman. And we can't fault the men for, you know, falling into the traps that women are putting out almost on the daily. It's our job as women, if we're not liking the men in today's society, we have to realize it's correlated to our internal world and our internal beliefs that are allowing us to perceive men in the way we do. And it would be foolish not to question what we are doing to men. We can't always play victim, place blame outside of ourselves. So within that, I was on OnlyFans for one month. I was over-sexualizing my body since I was 16 on Instagram. And I got to a point where I saw what it was doing to me which was ruining my self-concept and my, my femininity because a true feminine woman would be repulsed by what's happening outside of ourselves right now with our young, young children, even on TikTok shaking their ass for what it's really sick. And um, so this is why I preach semen retention because I think it's also really important for men to harness their life force energy to protect themselves, to protect their energetic field, to gain control over their mind and to not fall into these traps that are specifically put out to make us weak. And I won't have it. It's, it's so powerful, man. <laughs> it's so powerful what you're talking about because it's the truth. Yeah. And I've had past guests and dating episodes. I cover everything on this platform where it's about, you speak about it a lot in your videos, leaky energy, right? Mm -hmm. Stop trying to find your manhood through like your balls. It's it, I'm telling you. And once, and this is gonna sound crazy because once you don't do that, it's kind of wild when you get in and you're around other females, mm -hmm. they can sense that. But there's a disclaimer because there's one of two things. Either A, they look at it and they're like, okay, it's an attraction piece and you can filter through if you're an intelligent, you know, male. Or it turns into the more thirst traps, the more this, the more that. And you see that. And I think what men got to do is men got to really harness 
and say to themselves is, when you're finding that person that you're wanting to date, or you're in that relationship, you have to know how to control both of the energies, right? Because your lady's doing the exact same thing. Now, if she's searching for other validation through other channels, DMs and you know, emails or whatever, other men out there, then you have an issue. Hmm. But if she's protecting her energy towards you, you don't understand like the cosmic ability of what will happen in a bedroom between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. But there's too many men and there's too many women that want to do that with many different people. Mm-hmm. So how are you supposed to be devoted when you're distracted? But that's back to you though. Mm, that's really powerful what you just said. And that's my message, you know, that's my message. I, I'm i not against sexuality. Like a lot of people when I first started making my, my semen retention content and kind of calling out what's happening, you know, people sometimes get the wrong idea that I'm shaming sexuality. I'm putting shame upon this and I'm not. I have such a calling right now to bring back sacredness to what sex is. The word sex is not even something that our parents are even to teach. We're not even allow- allowing our children to know what sex is. So yeah, they're going to go find it on on uh, websites that are not healthy. And we see it through music videos. And this is why it's so important to first and foremost, have a devotion to yourself, to really feel into your sexual energy. A lot of people will find, you know, short term gratification um, because they're trying to fill a void in themselves that they haven't been able to fully recognize. So when that urge comes online, it's not an urge to go do something with this pleasure. It's to look inwards to see why am I, a lot of people don't even question why they do things. That's another thing. A lot of people are so unconscious walking around like the walking dead, not able to be aware of what they do during the the day, the thoughts they think, why are they even wanting to have sex? Like when you really think about it, people are way more comfortable stripping down naked, get it, having someone in them or penetrating someone than to actually sit down with a a human being eye to eye and say, this is my authentic self. This is my triggers. This is my trauma. Um, You know, and, and that's the thing we put on masks for people and in the bedroom, our souls are really forming these, these bonds to, to who we're sleeping with. And with that comes a transferring of what the energy behind the reason you are participating in that sex is being transferred into that person. So if if it's coming from a place of not loving yourself, not loving the individual, your insecurities, your uh, unworthiness, you're transferring that into that person. And then you're walking around with even heavier baggage in the energetics that we're not taught about, but it's a very huge factor upon being a human being is learning the energetic principles and then being able to further get to know someone in the, you know, the physical and the physical can look good, of course, but uh, sometimes it don't feel good in totality. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. You, 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 there's so much power for what you say, because it's like, people don't understand, like having a good conversation back and forth with somebody, if you're on a date or you're a handful of dates and things like that, before you actually penetrate them, I always use this ideology penetrate a woman's mind before you penetrate her body mm, right I love that. because yeah. when you get to the mind you'll understand how to open her up right mm-hmm. reality is women are and I, I don't like to say it like this but it's the truth women are the gatekeepers to sex this is how mm-hmm. it is yeah. so if you can turn her on mentally with the right ways of emotional intelligence and say the right things and provide a safe space i'm telling you men You'd be surprised what you get back, but it's for her to also be able to understand what is she bringing to the table. And I've been, I've dated somebody where it was in the first like month. She said, what is your intention? We slept with each other one time. Hmm. And I realized there's a lot of, cause I think she got scared because she sees the podcast. She sees where everything's going. Okay. Who is this guy? What's he about? He's probably got hoes all over the place. And it ain't even like that. But when I said to her, look, this is who I am. This is how I show up for you. You're going to have to meet me in the middle. She was like, okay, well, we'll meet you in the middle. Hmm. But then we met in the middle, but then there were so many different things that ended up starting just 
crumbling away because tough times create hard realities for some people, right? Yeah. And then you start understanding that they're not really healed because they have past traumatic experiences from another relationship. And then it just starts seeping through. And then you got to bada bing, bada boom, go about your business. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I still yeah. wish that other side love. It's always going to be that. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, is that when you're out there and you're wanting to date, get off those apps, people, right? Like, get off the apps. I, yeah, don't do it. I've, I've done the dating app experience. I'm telling you, it's low vibrational energy. You See, <laughs> I, I actually, I've never been on a dating app ever before. I've just known like that shit is not normal. I just find it not normal. Yeah, it's it's funny because... <laughs> I'm the type of person where it's like this. It's not about rushing through things, but what are we doing here? What's the intention, right? right? Because I know what it is I want. Do you know what it is you want? It doesn't have to be about the hookup. And mm -hmm. I'm going to attack the, the, the red pill manosphere community because I feel like they preach a lot of this ideology, but they're dealing with low vibrational people. You know what I mean? Oh, you got to have the master of game and it's your mouthpiece and this and that. Listen, you don't even have sometimes have to talk. Yeah. Like you can just attract by this how your energy is. Yeah. Hey, who are you? Network of people first. You know, I had a past guest where you said you want to really find idea ideal minds, network with people first. Mm -hmm. Then see where it goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that's a crucial part. I think so many people are coming into the dating sphere with needing a void to be filled because they're uncomfortable either being by themselves, being with the emotions that they feel on a day daily basis of being inadequate, um, not feeling good about themselves. So they need that reflection of another person's love to fill the voids that they can't do by themselves. Because listen, it is really scary to really look within to see where you haven't shown up for yourself, to see the lies that you've been telling yourself on the daily. And that's the first step though. The first step, this is why I, I love the, taking accountability for your life has changed my life in so many beautiful ways because I'm not po pointing blame. And even you know, within communication now, I have the ability to take space, to like take space, at, like before I communicate with someone and seeing where is it actually coming from? Like a lot of people just will speak without even their conscious awareness, being able to become aware of the word vomit that comes out on dates, on, you know, just interactions, maybe sometimes podcasts. And it's very important, you know, just within, you know, dating's kind of wild right now there's a lot of people telling people how to date and that is very scary as well because a lot of people are very insecure and they can't look within like we've been saying and all the answers are within you know within what i do my intention isn't to tell people how to live their lives my intention is to at least guide them back into their own guidance system that knows better and to kind of awaken into the truth of who we are as human beings and what we're deserving of. Because we are deserving of healthy love, healthy communication. I am i honestly don't think it's even healthy to raise your voice at anyone. I think there's better ways to communicate. Um, it's just you know we first have to be aware of why we feel the need to either degrade people. And it's always... It always comes back to this. Everything you see outside of yourself, even your relationships, is truly a direct reflection of what's happening inside. I say if you're going to thirst trap, thirst trap with the person that you're, you're creating that bond with. Like yeah. when you guys formulate it. Because it's like, I think any man or woman can also say this also too. And if you don't, you're lying to the general public. But like when you have that rapport built with the person, instead of like shooting your shot in DMs with like eggplant emojis and the peach emoji, please don't say do like, that. right? Don't but do say that. say you like you're meeting up with your girl, you guys are gonna do the dinner thing, the that, the that, the that, and then it's like send those messages. Then like it's you fun. have that bond, and when yeah. you have that tight bond, you see where she's like at work, and like it's hard for me to control work. Like I can't even work right now. Like what are you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> Or you see the same thing, vice versa. You're at work, you're sitting there, you're at your computer, you're doing whatever. Your girl goes shopping. She goes, oh, how does this look on me? And you're like, like, I'm working. What are we doing here? <laughs> like, I'm seeing you later. What are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it gives you something to actually look forward to. 
But what I'm saying is safe space, emotional intelligence, ladies and gentlemen. But it's no longer there. Mm. Semen retention. It's for men. How can women garner the same ability? What do they do? Okay. Speak on some stuff that you've done. Yeah, I would love to. This is something that's truly brought me into the woman I am today. Um, and it's something I'm so passionate about just because I've seen what it's done for me and not even just like attracting all this the men or like, you know, some people do semen retention and this for the wrong reasons of like trying to attract people, which is going to happen naturally. Cause when you raise your energy, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb in today's society where everyone's really low calibration. So when you raise your, your energy levels, people will just tell when you walk into a room. Um, it's, it's, it really is that powerful, but, um, within like everything I preach upon semen retention, it correlates directly what women do. It's seriously like for me, you guys, it's been six months and I haven't masturbated and I haven't, uh, had sex. I haven't orgasmed in six months. Um, and with that has come so much power and I got guidance to do this. Like I don't hear women talking about this ever. So that's why, you know, within the trust I built for myself by taking accountability of my life, um, I trusted that this was the next step for me. Uh, I had no idea where it was going to take me. I just knew that the thought of me seeking outside validation again made me feel sick to my stomach because I had to see what it did in like my life following up me making this decision. And what I do is I really, for me, at least I'll just tell you what I did. I've been retaining all the sexual energy, but I've been also using it for creation. I've created my YouTube channel. I've created the space to actually form a relationship with myself by not having to use this energy to like touch myself or whatever. I still experience turn on, but I'm turned on by life. I'm turned on by my own energy. And when I'm turned on by it, a light switch goes off of, Hey, I, maybe I want to do a YouTube video, or maybe I want to serve my higher purpose or, you know, what can I do with this energy? Uh, sometimes I do poetry with it. I, I open this channel just to fully allow myself to meet this energy because your sexual energy is you. It's what brought you onto this planet. Um, so it's really important just to become aware of it within the body, to breathe into it, to ask it questions, to allow it to guide you. And it can't guide you if you're constantly giving it away to people who don't give a shit about you. Hmm. Man, powerful. It's the truth. It's the truth because you walk into rooms and you're operating at the high energy and you see the attraction that comes. It's like people flock to you, but it's, it doesn't have to be on like, I'm trying to get with you type of thing. It's just like, what does that person have? You turn heads. I was at a, what was it? It was a, a festival, festival thingy. Yeah. I walk by this lady. This lady stops me. She goes, yo, your energy's radiating. I was like, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, <laughs> you have yourself a good night, things like that. She goes, no, 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 no. She goes, you can tell your energy's, you're operating at a higher frequency. Yeah. And I'm like, if you can do that in the room, what does that mean? What is that going to do if you're wanting to put that towards a business or content yeah. creation or yeah. you see even athletes do it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Fighters do it in the UFC. Boxers do it. They practice that abstinence, not masturbating, not having sex for 16 weeks. And they can be yeah. fully married or in a committed relationship, but their partner understands. Yeah. They're focused on what it is they want to get to. Yeah. Right? Now, what do you think it's going to feel like when you're actually now with your person? And that's all said and done. And then you go do what you need to do. The, the levels, the level, the energy levels is game over. That's how babies are made, ladies and gentlemen. Do I have to give you the formula? <laughs> I know. It, I, it, and it's really silly for us as a society to discount the power of our own sexuality. It's being broadcast like it's, you know, our Sunday breakfast, um, like it's nothing. Like, and it's it's quite, It honestly, there's a part of me that, it's not coming from like judgment, but it does disgust me to some degree because I'm seeing 
what it's even allowing our children in today's society to think that's acceptable. Like, you know, when I was on Instagram and, and even sometimes it shows up on my YouTube of like, like girls dancing, like with like yoga pants on and, and like shorts. And like, it's just wild to me that it's even all these traps I talk about that men fall into women. I fell into it. I fell into the trap of needing to over-sexualize myself to gain. I was trying to gain like, you know, the influencer life of, I showcase my ass, my tits, I get the validation I've been needing, and I get a following, and then I get a career out of it. Eh, okay. But within that, it's like, that's not who Maya was. Imagine if I went down that path, I would have done such a disservice to my true purpose, which is to show up and speak my truth, because that was not my truth. Me being over-sexualized for male validation was not empowering, was not impactful, it was disheartening and it was tarnishing femininity and femininity and masculinity is a huge topic, but within it, it's being, it's out of balance right now. Um, you know, I feel like femininity has been something that's honestly, I like to say more repressed than like in the previous generations, because we're, we're viewing femininity as just like basically sexual it's all sexual how is this woman like you know her, her looks her her i don't know just all external things that are just not what it means to be a man or a woman if this is this all this is just my human suit there is so much more behind this you know and that's why we're here we're not here just to be this perfect character taking selfies all day it's not going to provide our society with an empowering, impactful life for our next generation as well. Like, you know, it might be great to have this lifestyle when you're in your twenties or thirties, but what about the people who aren't having children because of it? What about the people who can't find themselves in healthy relationships? And then are you still going to be putting blame on other people when you're 50 and single? This is why the accountability when you're in a young age to foster, is it really important? That's why I like when Jay-Z said 30 is the new 20, because it's like, you see it, everything is becoming what it needs to become. And we are humans and we have to become, right? So my question to you is, what are the distractions? And we can, we can free flow, we can free flow this between men and women that we need to do to really shut off that mainstream. And I say it's the mainstream because it is the mainstream, right? Conservative media is telling you something totally different. High level conversation here. But the mainstream likes to push the sexualization. It's obvious. It's in our face. We see it, right? But how can we be able to desensitize ourselves to really live in our higher being? I think first and foremost within that, like, you know, I think a lot of people within like the, the, the media web, you know, we're being sexuality is advertised it's really being manipulated and a lot of people aren't even aware that they have a scrolling problem and a scrolling problem is just the biggest avoidance of yourself because when you're alone or when you're even with people at dinner people are addicted to just going and constantly needing to scroll to supply them with a level of dopamine happiness that is coming from what like another person's life Another person's life, you're more dedicated to supporting another person living their best life than to take a step back to self-reflect, be like, why am I giving all of my powerful energy away to even liking someone's picture, to even liking something that it, do you really like? Like, do you really like liking models, ass pictures all day? What part of you is doing that? Take accountability for that. Women, why are you spending your days always needing to show your face and your, and your body every single day? Well, it's deeper. It's because it's a huge void that's being filled by external sources. And I really think this is where we just have to awaken in today's society is, you know, social media can be used for really powerful ways, like what we're doing right now, speaking truth. Um, but it also has a shadow side to it. And I think it's just as important to shine our light onto it, you know, is it's okay. shining the light onto it. And of course it can be uncomfortable to, you know, I'm sure some people are triggered by maybe they're, they do 
this and there's no judgment there. I just wish that more people could take, you know, a period of time to self reflect on the reasons they, they do the things that they do uh, constantly every day. Thanks. You know, I, I'll say this, especially with Instagram, I glitched out my Instagram in such a way that I can only see what I need to see on my main page. And I don't even, <laughs> the crazy thing about it is now I don't even, you don't see all the fluff, right? On my page, when I scroll, it's either going to be sports, podcast related, other podcasters that I've, inter- or I've you know, had conversations with, or like entrepreneurship stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what it is. It's like 33%, 33%, 33%, 33%. The 1% maybe that fitness person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even your for you page, but it shows is that what you put your energy into is going to come back. Heck, if you just want to uh, yeah. look at sports, look at sports. But if you're out here on, you know, the fitness, you see this girl doing this and that girl doing this and this girl doing that, like, come on now, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? Oh, to- and that's why it's so powerful because – you know, like the algorithms, it's a, it just goes to show the direct reflection of what's happening inside. What you're giving your energy to is going to be showcased. Yeah. I'm not saying Instagram's bad. I'm not saying TikTok's bad, YouTube, social media. It's just, what are you seeing every single day that's programming you to be the certain way you are? And I really hope people stop blaming people. And this is the other thing. I say what I say because first and foremost, I've taken a self accountability. So I feel like with that, if I was still doing the things I was doing and then partic- and then showcasing like this other side of Maya, speaking on behalf of it, like it wouldn't, I would be a hypocrite. So because I've really, you know, done that, that, that work of at least just seeing where I wasn't showing up in my, my purpose. Now I can talk about it. And I think Instagram isn't bad. Like you were saying, it's literally, you can program it to actually make you a good human being. It's your software. It's your programming. You can. Yeah. So that's why I think it's great that you pointed that out because it's, you can, it's just look into what's showing up on your feed every day and why. Well, it's, it's wild because there was an interview that happened. I believe it was with Lewis Howes and Terry Crews, right? And Lewis Howes, world-renowned podcaster, things like that. And Terry Crews had a, a, how do I say this without triggering the algorithm by the time this comes out, um, a corn addiction, right? Mm-hmm. Get on your Googles, you know what it is. And you ask yourself, you're like, a man of so much status and so much power, how do you have that addiction? But you're married. You know what I mean? Heck, if you want to, you know, jump into something totally different, maybe get out of the relationship and, and do what you need to do. And I think that what a lot of men do is they watch what's happening on the screen, on the pixels. Mm -hmm. They're getting off on pixels. Mm -hmm. They subscribe to the OnlyFans people, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing all these things. And I know that there's a side to it. It is what it is. If you're a photographer and you want to take pictures of models, that's on you. Yeah, It's a business. How do, with, with men, it's more of a statement here. You have your phone or you have your tablet or you have your computer, like, do you just go cold turkey and just cut everything off? You just cut off all the corn sites? Do you just deactivate? What what would you say with all that? It really depends on, I think, the severity of a person's inability to um, really take themselves out of pleasure. Because a lot of what with the whole corn addiction, it's just addiction to to short term pleasure that's feeding a very deep void. And, you know, that's truly what that is. And a lot of people will cut themselves short in this life by chasing that pleasure. And pleasure is the shadow aspect of joy. So you're cutting Mm. yourself off from really actually stepping outside of the pleasure and realizing pleasure is just an aspect of the capacity of your own joy. And it's the shadow end of that. So um, within like the, the corn addiction, which I talk about a lot, And I want to point this out. A lot of men struggle with it. And it's so sad because it's not looked at as a serious problem. It's looked at as like, oh, yeah, you watch corn? Me too. Why are you, what, what, like, what are you complaining about? It's, it's nothing. And it's everything. When a man falls into this pit, we aren't aware of, 
honestly, the, the implications that come, his whole entire life force energy is being drained onto these sites um, that are really tying him down. And I'm not saying this, like, it's obviously a man or a woman's issue, like that they're, that they're needing to be aware of, but it's also, you know, something that we need to be able to talk about more. Cause I, I speak to a lot of men, like within what I do on the daily is men who have fallen really deep into these traps and they feel ashamed by it. Um, and it's not something I feel like we should shame men for. Uh, I think it's more so should be an open topic to discuss and that's really how change happens. And I just really wish that more people would be aware that your, your, short, your short-term pleasure is really nothing compared to feeling that, that uncomfortability and then feeling full-time comfortability out of just allowing that uncomfortability to move from the body. But we don't allow our uncomfortable emotions just to move out by allowing them to be there without judgment. Instead, we're so scared of that part of ourselves that we're so quick to jump to a woman to, to, to fix that within us or these sites, you know? And really, you guys, within your urge to go watch these things within the corn websites, take a second to sit with this energy until instead of just making this quick decision that you know everyone who has a corn addiction knows that the thought that brought them onto that site was not serving them, but they've been so programmed because it is a program. Now your habits program you as a being that they can't even grab the other end of that stick because it's such a, a, a large jump to get there, you know, within their mind. But to someone who doesn't have a corn addiction, we're like, it's just a thought. Just don't follow that thought. And then you'll feel better. But they've been so programmed that they don't know any better, you know? So um, I don't, that the corn addiction thing, I really do wish that it was more openly addressed. So more men felt not ashamed of it. And the more you feel shame about it, the more you're unwilling to change it because it's in your shadow as well. I'm going to say something that's going to be probably fucking controversial right now. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why they don't want to talk about it is because they need another way and another vessel to control because okay so look at it from this perspective masculinity is a thing you speak to femininity is a thing so if more men are out here watching pixels and they're you know rubbing one out mm -hmm. one time three times for the week or for the day or whatever your energy is going to deplete 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 so you're not going to want to do anything mm -hmm. but if you keep doing that that means oh i can satisfy myself that doesn't mean i don't have to say for instance meet a lady get married if that's the choice or date to maybe potentially have a kid. What I feel like they do is they put it out there in our face to control the world population. Does that make sense? Oh yes. Makes right? total sense. And that's what, when you're aware of this, you're like, holy shit, I want to wake more people up to this. Like it's really powerful to see what's beyond the veil of what's happening in like the manipulation, it all stems from the manipulation of our life force energy. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. I think that's the reason why we have so many different things that are out there. I don't really want to get into it because they'll, they'll get rid of me quick if I start going. Right. Mm -hmm. But I just yeah. think that you don't see it happen a lot and you see X people from OnlyFans or porn stars are actually talking about this now. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot on Twitter. Cause I, I listen to a lot of open form conversations and, and debates and it's actually pretty mind blowing that yeah. there's a lot of people that have the same thought process, but I'm like, if you keep pushing this, it makes men or women not want to go out there and have to meet other people and they can just self pleasure themselves. It's what they want to do, but then they want to bring it into the relationship or bring it into the girl and think all girls, that's how all women are going to be. And I'm going to tell you, no, they're not, no, no they're not. It's all angles. It's all angles and narratives. It's all net. It's all perfect. It's all a production. You know what it's I mean? Production. It's all fake. It's it's all that's fake. You know, and that exactly. that's the sad part. People are getting off to something that's not real, and it's 
it's really like when you really look into it, it is a really sick thing that even these sites are even accessible. Like we should know better that this is not healthy, but it's only healthy because, or it's, you know, viewed as healthy because people are benefiting off of it. But now benefiting now it's like we live in a society where it's empowering to, you know, do whatever you want and, you know, showcase your body this way or to, you know, have three girlfriends. It's an empowering thing. We've come a long way. We deserve it. But it's like, no, it's not It's funny true. you say that. It's funny you say that. We're in such in sync right now because that's, that's one of the last talking points is that's so pushed, right? You know, date as many people, right? And it kind of plays into the whole hookup culture. And I've said it at the beginning where it's like, you can't be, you can't be devoted and distracted at the same time. You, I feel like a lot of folks, and you see this in the dating market, it's one to many. It's not one to one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that men and women are both both in league into this. You you have that past ex that you're going back and you're hooking up with, but you're wanting to date other people, or you know you have that one fling that you had in the summertime of. 2021 you know what i mean and you want to hook back up with it because either the the dick was good or the other side was good i get it right that's just those dopamine hits that you're just shocking your body with and it's empty calories yeah and it doesn't provide what it needs to provide this hookup culture and what you just said how do men and women just overcome this it's a pandemic it's its own global pandemic how do we overcome that? I think we overcome it honestly by having a period of I, I I you know I think every human being needs a period of solitude and that's not saying cutting out like all like relationships but a period of solitude to really allow yourself to form a relationship to who you are and by building trust within yourself you know bringing my three things like in a relationship that are super important for an individual to bring love isn't the first thing love doesn't make a relationship the the feelings of, of joy and all this stuff that is produced like in like the honeymoon phase and then it dwindles like when someone shows their humanness and it's we get scared because we're not allowing ourselves to fully feel into our humanness which is our emotions and emotions are labeled as very wrong in today's society which is why there's depression, anxiety, and we're actually labeling our human beings by an emotion when that emotion is just our guidance system telling us that we're out of alignment. So then we're making these people solidified in a state of out, outer alignment or not being in alignment through drugs. Like, and that's another topic that's really sick. But, um, you know, within the, the dating sphere of having multiple partnerships, if you don't have trust and loyalty and a person's ability to self-reflect and uh, take accountability, you don't have a relationship, um, you know? So that's why like when everyone's preaching so many different things, but I think like you said, like the red pill community likes to preach a lot about if I'm a high value man, I can sleep with as many women as I want. And she has to accept that because of the man I am. And that is wild to me because it's like, what are we doing? Like, why do we feel the need to support this type of behavior? I really do believe, listen, do what you want to do. If you want to be in polyamorous relationships, that makes you feel good. Do it. Um, I just know that true, true devotion and a true sacred container with just one other person that you can access true freedom of knowing that you have a person that is by your side that won't run away if you showcase maybe the scariest parts of your soul and can hold you in that and can see you in that and doesn't run because they had a period of time where they had to look themselves in the mirror every day and say, holy shit, like this is who I am. Yeah, the parts that I'm scared as hell to show another person if you can accept that in yourself, but that doesn't make you who you are, it allows you to provide a greater depth in a relationship because you can hold another person because you've been able to hold yourself in that space and not running away from yourself. 
that's the type of relationship I truly feel like every single individual is deserving of, but a lot of people aren't ready for it because they haven't taken the time to get to know themselves in that way, if that makes sense. It makes so much sense. And you, you said it because the hookup culture only lasts for so long. I know guys that say, oh, you know, I'm just out here doing whatever. And eventually, and then they lock in themselves into a relationship. And then it's either marriage or it's either, you know, long term. You have a kid, ba ba ba. It is what it is. And I champion that. But you got to find it in yourself first. Like, cut off the vessel of the hookup culture. Like, what's what people got to understand? You know what sexy is now? Is when you can be across from the person, have a conversation. And it's not about, yo, I'm trying to sl- I'm trying to smash. I'm trying to sleep with you. You know what I mean? Because I tell this to a lot of guys here, right? Go into these conversations and just take the self pleasure off the off the market and just have a wholesome conversation. See how she reacts to it. Because I'll tell you, nine times out of ten, or a grounded woman will know how to react to it. The ones that are not grounded, they're like, "Well, wait, he's not wanting to sleep with me." He doesn't want to take me home. Mm-hmm. It makes them have to inter-reflect. Mm-hmm. And what you're now creating is a turmoil. You're creating, tur- you're creating turbulence because now they have to find it themselves as, what does he want? Yeah. What does he want? Yeah. Well, he doesn't want your body because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's like all money goes in the bank at the end of the day. You can't take yeah. it to the grave with you. At yeah. some point in time, yes, we know that we will potentially sleep with each other. But once you don't enter the conversation with that first... And you have to say, hey, listen, who are you? What are you up to? Da, 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 da. And you start going through everything, you see the magic happen. Because I've had those magic moments. I can say that as a guy. You mm-hmm. see those magic moments. You feel what those magic moments look like. You know when it's all about the hookup. You know what I mean? I get yeah. it. It's temptation. It's lust. You know what I mean? The totally. right people can turn that on and you can have some amazing connections that way. But not everybody has that because you have to have that spiritual alignment first. You know what I mean? Mm, It's so crucial for like everyone to, that's honestly why we're here. Like, you know, there's like, we we're here on this planet, like not to, you know, be enslaved upon our own mindset that's keeping us small or attracting into our life's people. And, and that's why I like to say, look back at your past relationships, like actually look at how you showed up in them, even the people you dated. And that's truly like such a great mirror for you to see into yourself, maybe the things that you didn't like, or the things that you did, or how could you show up better for another person. And instead of always needing that other person to show up better for you, um, you need to show up better for yourself every single day, and be relentless in that act of how can I be a better human being every single day? What do I need to take out of my life that maybe feels good, but I know that the uncomfortability will far precede this short term thing I'm getting. Um, and that's kind of like what I've I had to do. Like I made commitments to myself. I actually went through a breakup in August, and that's kind of what cracked me open. And I was like, listen. I could, there was like a moment in time where I was like, oh, I kind of want to go like showcase myself on Instagram again and like get a bunch of validation and stuff. And I was like, I can't do it. I literally got brought down to my knees and I was like, I was like, I need to do, I need to change. I need to do something because this shit isn't working out for Maya anymore. Um, I don't want to depend on another person to provide me with uh, satisfaction. I want to find satisfaction with in who Maya is and I've got to see myself and I had to sit with myself every day and own up to everything I I did within that relationship and other relationships. And with that gave myself, I gave myself space and containment within the emotions that I always needed another person to fix. And I fixed them myself. And the, the confidence that comes with that Now, when I speak to an individual, when I show up in like, you know, a relationships, it's like, I can actually show up and give another person all of me. I can actually see another human being in their triggers, in their trauma. And I don't take it as an attack. I don't take it personally. I know that perhaps it's something that they're going through right now, or uh, maybe a lot of people are are just unconscious in it. And I'm not going to take that on as, as, 
an attack to who Maya is. I think allowing space for human beings to be human beings without the need to take things personally um, is also a cheat code into having peace of mind. Everyone wants peace of mind, but a lot of people are addicted to not having peace of mind because it solidifies this, this programming within them that uh, needs to be fed. So, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's so much power for what you say, because like, I even think about it just to close us out where I'm at now mentally. And this is no diss to any of my exes. Anybody that's watching or watch, listening to this, take all the good parts of past relationships. And that's how you'll know who you really are. Look at those exes and say, well, where I'm at now, could we even reach to that same level? I'll be the first person to tell you, hell no. Hell no. Oh, the, the, it's it's levels above. It's light years ahead. Like, yeah. it's having that brass ring. Can can they really reach that brass ring? No, no. Because I've been in places in the city and you see past people that you dated. Yeah. And they look at you like deer in headlights. They don't know what to do because they just have to stare because they see is, oh, well, he's gotten to that level now. Yeah. Well, you missed your blessing. <laughs> All the times I was talking to you, you missed your blessing. But that's no diss to you. Yeah. You just have to do the work. Because you can get to that level. Anybody can get to the level, but you have to do the work. You got to sometimes, like, I'm champion the power of solitude. Be alone. You know what I mean? Yes. You speak about it. You show vulnerability. You're going to get tempted. You're going to have these trigger points. But it's for you to take those trigger points and not necessarily act on them. Right? Because Mm -hmm. think about it. You get into a relationship, you're still going to have those trigger points. You still maybe see somebody that's going to look better than the person that you're dating. Does that mean you go jump in the sack with that other person? No. Mm -hmm. You restructure, and you reformulate those dopamine hits within your own fucking relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's what it all comes down to. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like, I think we all just need to do like a total detox. I think every human being would benefit from just doing a detox upon outside external things that allow them to feel um like themselves like a lot of people if they didn't have outside sources to to validate them they would be walking around with no clue who they are um so yeah i think out of this whole podcast episode i just really want people to know that you'll never truly find satisfaction within another um it satisfaction comes from within satisfaction comes from forming this relationship to a higher power than your weak mind or just your human vessel. We're here as sacred human beings. We have sacredness that runs through our veins and we discount that on, on the daily and we're deserving of living in, in healthy energetics and attracting into our lives, healthy partnerships. And it first comes from forming this, relationship to yourself and and being okay being by yourself and that not making you into you know a a person that you're not a lot of people are just scared of just being who that I've been by myself for six months like I don't even hang out really with anyone I really have taken it seriously this this period of time in my life because I know like right now I'm 24 I'm not going to have this period of isolation my ent- my whole entire life. I'm going to use this period of isolation to work on myself so then in my future I can show up in the highest good for my husband, my children, my purpose work, and it starts by doing that work. You know, it it starts by just step by step, day by day. You don't need to have it all done at once. It's going to be a it's we're always going to be on this journey of self-improving. We're always going to have stuff to improve on, but make it fun. Don't make it scary. It, it, it's fun and it's cool to get to know yourself. The interesting part to what you say is when you do that, that's when you least expect. And that's when the right person actually finds you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And that's what's yeah. not scary. I don't want to say it's scary, but it's, it's just you, that's just how it happens. And then you're like, what the hell? And then this life just hits you in the face and you're like, pa, 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 and you're like what? Mm-hmm. What just happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, because I hear and everybody says yeah. the exact same thing. You know, totally. Because it's when you're coming from a fulfilled place, 
then you won't have to like, you know, a lot of people just aren't coming from fulfilled places when they show up in relationships. So, you know, it, it does happen when you're focused on just bettering yourself as an individual, serving yourself, serving your greater purpose every day, you're going to be served in return. That's how it works. The more, the more you serve, the more you get served. Um, mm. And I think mm. that's crucial. You know, it, it is a crucial part of this, this human experience because everyone has a gift and don't discount your gifts. Don't discount the purpose that's, that you know you're here for. I always knew I was here for a greater purpose than my body. I knew it, but I just didn't know how I was supposed to accept myself in my own truth. But do it anyways. Do it with fear running through your body, with uncomfortability in your in your body every day. And that being okay. You being uncomfortable while, while doing the things you know you love is okay. And the more you overcome that, the more confidence you build, the more power you get to be integrated in the body and the more you trust yourself. And then your life will just honestly, you know, kind of be this like magical experience and you'll find magic even in the shitty days. You know what? That's how we, that's how you mic drop it. See, I hit the soundboard right now. I ain't going to do that. We ain't going to take away from that, but that's how you mic drop it. And I, and I want, I'm going to give it back to you in just a matter of moments. Where can everybody check out that YouTube channel? Because I know there's particular people as we're recording this and the time that this comes out, which I can't say it right now, but I want you to plug your YouTube and mm -hmm. where can everybody check you out? Because I know there's particular people that are going to want to check your page out. And I know there's going to be a lot of talking points that are going to come to me with. I'm like, listen, you can go book the one-on-one -on -one consultation with her. Right. I just put the peas to the pod and that's just how it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, well, um, the only social media platform I have is YouTube and it's under magic Maya with, with two A's at the end of Maya. Um, and yeah, that's my only social media platform. And I, I post on there every single day and, you know, um, within my, my channel and my content, it truly is to just kind of, be who, who Maya is and show up in truth and authenticity and allow you guys to realize that there's so much greater options for your life. And it all starts with you. Um, it doesn't start with anything outside of yourself. And I guess my intention within this channel is to guide people back into their own innate wisdom that they have and that's been discounted and disremembered. And I just hope to awaken, you know, the collective, whoever wants to check out my channel, just to know that, You've got it in you um, and and you're worthy of just being who you are because who you are is enough because that is you and that's why you are here. We all got gifts to share and I just I want people to know that they're worthy to share to showcase that to the world. There's Facts. people waiting. Facts. And I'll say this information changes situations. Mm. You know what I mean? And like I said, is even when I reached out to you before the. I, I was watching the content. I'm like, I just stumbled on the content. It's weird. It's just the energy you put out there just comes back to you. And I'm like, I'm going to hit that subscribe button. Let me really tap into what she's got going on. I'm just like, yo, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> men and women, information changes your situations. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling, Magic Mind is right there. Magic Mind is right there. That's all you got to do. Nothing more, nothing said, you know? Yeah. yeah. I appreciate well, you. I, I really do appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your dedication to, you know, who you are and what you're showcasing and what you're bringing forth onto this planet right now is powerful. And you're a great representation of masculinity and speaking truth and being bold in, in who, who Rory is. And Rory's a worthy man. And I'm happy that you've dedicated uh, your time into – areas of conversation that perhaps are overlooked and and not really tapped into so i'm happy that we got to tap into this today together and cook some good some good information up for the people good i love cookout. that i know it is a cookout right but we out